Hi, chemist. Welcome back. We are now going to focus on the properties of ionic bonding and ionic compounds. By the end of this video, you should be able to write formulas for ionic compounds, explain what an empirical formula is, list and explain the properties of ionic bonds, and model the formation of an ionic compound using Lewis dot diagram. Ionic bonds are very strong. It has to do with the fact that the crystal lattice at which all of the bonds are connected makes it very difficult for these compounds to move and melt and boil. These, that is why they are typically solids at room temperature. Because of this, as I mentioned, they will have high melting and boiling point. You can identify an ionic, ionic compound because it's made primarily of a metal and a nonmetal. Remember, metals are located on the left-hand side of the staircase of the periodic table. They do not conduct electricity in the solid state, but they will in the liquid and aqueous states. Aqueous, if you remember, means to be dissolved in water. Here are some examples for how we will show the formation of ionic compounds. We will be using electron dot structures or Lewis dot diagrams to predict the compound that will form between two elements. For example, if we start with sodium, sodium has one valence electron, that is why I have one dot. Fluorine has seven valence electrons, that's why it has seven dots. Sodium will give its electron to fluorine because fluorine has a greater attraction for that electron. And what will happen is sodium will now have a positive one charge and fluorine will have a negative one charge. When that happens, those two things are attracted to each other and that is what creates your ionic bond. To write the formula for this particular model, you want to make sure that you write the metal first and then the nonmetal. So that is why we will write NaF. We also write NaF because we can see that it is in a one-to-one -one ratio. Sodium loses one electron and fluorine will gain that one electron. Here's another example. We want to use, again, two different atoms to illustrate how an ionic compound will form. So we have magnesium and chlorine. So magnesium has two valence electrons, chlorine has seven. As we mentioned, we would expect magnesium to lose an electron, because that's the metal, to the chlorine, because chlorine has a much greater attraction for those electrons. But if you notice, chlorine is now satisfied with its octet of eight electrons. However, magnesium is not. In order to get rid of that second electron that magnesium has, we need to create a new chlorine. And when we do that, we write our seven valence electrons around it. Magnesium will now lose that electron. And then if you notice, when we're writing the formula, you still need to write metal first and nonmetal second. This one's a little different though, because if you notice the ratio at which these two things combine, we now have one magnesium to two chlorine atoms. And so that's why your formula will be MgCl2. Here's another example. This is the most complicated example you will see. If you take aluminum and sulfur, again, we, aluminum has three valence electrons, sulfur has six. Aluminum will transfer one electron, two electrons. And as we did before, sulfur is now satisfied with its octet of electrons, however, aluminum is not. So we need to create another sulfur. Sulfur has six valence electrons, Aluminum is going to give up that electron to sulfur, but if you notice now, the sulfur is not satisfied. So guess what? We need to make another aluminum. That aluminum will have three valence electrons. It'll donate that one electron to sulfur, but then as you can see, the sulfur is now satisfied, however, aluminum is not. So then you'll have to make another sulfur with its six valence electrons and give up those two electrons to that sulfur. As you can see, it's really important that you're very clear as far as where you're transferring the electrons and you're very organized when you're drawing these structures. So just make sure you take your time. As I mentioned before, 
we have to write the metal first and the nonmetal second to write the formula. But just be careful here, because notice there are two aluminum to three sulfur. And so therefore your formula will be Al2S3. One last thing we should talk about is empirical formulas. Empirical formulas is basically an ionic compound that's written in the smallest whole number ratio. So while we have large crystals that have lots and lots of ions in them, we always write the smallest whole number ratio of ions to each other, and that is called the empirical formula. For example, it would be Mg3N2, not Mg6N4. That's really, really important. So always just make sure that your formulas are written in the smallest ratio. Here's a funny comic that I thought would make it a little bit more clear about ionic bonding. I wanted to give you a minute to read that. Hopefully that helped to make you a little bit more aware as to how we show ionic bonding between two um, uh, elements, a metal and a nonmetal. Um, next up, we will be talking about covalent bonding. So just make sure that you master this concept. Thank you so much for watching.